Hey guys, I'm here with Coach Leslie and just a few days out from a big powerlifting competition in Manila, which we'll be traveling to document. And uh, I want to take a few moments to, to find out a little bit more about Leslie and to let you into her world, what, what motivates her, what inspires her. So uh, Leslie, welcome. Hi. Leslie, how long have you been in Hong Kong? What brought you here? I think three months I've been here as a performance specialist here at Perform and um, I was so impressed with Perform's um, facilities and its vision and its mission in empowering women through strength training so I decided to pack up my bags in the Philippines and come here and do what Perform is doing. Uh -huh. And what were you doing in the Philippines before coming here? Um, I was a freight forwarder um, shipping uh, pricing specialist. Okay. So I was pricing air and shipping cargoes for DB Schenker, one of the uh, biggest companies for freight forwarding in the world. Okay. And so you've, you've left that sort of corporate world and obviously you've been performing it at a super high level for a long period of time. And what made you make that switch in terms of leaving the safe and secure job for the wonderful world of fitness and, uh, and, being, uh, yeah, and dedicating your time 100% to your, your strength coaching? Well, um, I've already done... Um, part-time and full-time one-on-one clients back in the Philippines while I was also juggling a job in the corporate life. However, um, I've been trying to uh, um, find some growth for myself as well in the fitness industry. And I thought that the Philippine industry does not have um, the same um, mission and vision that Perform has. So when I saw the um, equipments here at Perform, and the way it gives out the message that um, we have the best equipments here and we are willing to give you anything that you need for um, your personal development in strength training that made a lot of difference on me because I haven't seen that anywhere in the world as, an, as, as just as a statement. In itself, it is a statement and that's a very strong statement to make and it also stands for what it, it is pushing for and its um, goals every day awesome. with these women. Awesome. That's really refreshing to hear because that was certainly part of the vision is that uh, you know, whilst we, uh, we see ourselves as a gateway platform for women into fitness and we want to make ourselves open to women from all walks of life, shapes and sizes and so on, uh, essentially women who have never lived weight before, we also want to create a facility that had that kind of specialist touch to it so if someone did come in here and looked at it purely from a performance point of view, they would have got international credibility and it's fantastic to hear that you, did you, did you see that because I really don't think there's anything else like this anywhere around the world. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're blessed for having you here as a, as a strong leader within our team to actually you know, promote that to women. So coming down to your competition this weekend, uh, we're in Manila. Yeah. Tell us about the competition. Um, the competition will be uh, held in a mall. It's, usually, it's Robinson's Mall because it's the sponsor of the local federation. It's always been a partnership. This is a national competition. It is supposed to be also the last chance of the local athletes to qualify for the upcoming Asians equipped powerlifting. And this is a field of powerlifting that I used to play, but I had to uh, forego because I discovered that I am better in another form of powerlifting which is classic or raw but this time i want to prove something to myself as well that i can be as good in both areas of powerlifting because i think i also owe it to myself to also improve in both aspects of the sports that i love to pursue awesome awesome and just to give the, the listeners uh you know some feedback here with powerlifting there are sort of two iterations of the sport two variations one is equipped where you actually wear uh, certain types of uh, apparel or performance gear, which does assist uh, sometimes quite significantly with the actual uh, lift of the movement. And there's raw, where you wear no other accessories whatsoever. And they should be classified uh, very distinctly apart from each other because there are um, you know, very different mechanics involved and so on. And so is there any sort of uh, anxiety going into raw when, you, when you've done so well and equipped? Um, I've done well in equipped as well, but not as... as I would want to be uh, in classic. But the last time I did was, it was in Hong Kong. Uh -huh. And to be honest, um, it was not up to um, the quality or the standard that I should be performing because I actually bombed out on my squat here. But I got a medal for my 
bench and deadlift both gold so i am back on the platform because i need to prove something to myself not to anyone because this is a goal that i have set for myself so the anxiety really is all about um how am i going to do on that day because it's all about sometimes the the weight is okay but um there are several um factors that are out of our control during the competition especially in an equip um, powerlifting so for me first i gotta have that first squat in and i'm all in in the game that i, I love seeing that passion come through because what i really want to get down to is what powerlifting means to you why powerlifting you know you obviously got a natural tendency towards being an athlete so why, why powerlifting? powerlifting i'm a nerdy person and this is a 180 degree um, turn for me why powerlifting because it has taught me patience I am never a patient person, but with powerlifting, it has taught me to uh, stri uh, go through a stringent training plan that despite the fact that maybe in one week or two weeks, I'm not able to see the progress because that is what happened to me. I started out with people not um, seeing my potential. I myself didn't see that. I myself didn't see myself on a world platform. But every day as I trained, I just wanted bigger numbers, smaller numbers, smaller increments, because that's only what I wanted, because I wanted my numbers my own. I do not want to compete with other people, because that is essentially um, the essence of powerlifting or strength training. So for me, it's a lifelong journey. For as long as my numbers are going up, it also means that I am getting better. I am improving, and health-wise, I want to do this for long. I am not out to um, outlast anyone but to actually go into lifting until I'm 80s or 90s because it has taught me a lot about greeting, about life, about hardship, about going back up when you're down and not giving up because the metal is always there and so it's just like that. Life is like that. Totally. I love, I love that metaphor. Um, I think the reason powerlifting is such a, a fantastic sport that gives such a, a visceral um, growth as a person is it's literally numbers. It's numbers on the bar, and you put the work in. You enjoy the process. You have some ups and downs. Uh, there is no golden rule, and so you have to always be critical about you know your thought processes and and what you're doing, and being open to suggestion about maybe shaking up old paradigms that you were trapped in. And, and the greatest thing about this as a sport, not only for a female to feel that sense of strength and and embody that spirit, but also the fact that this is a sport which you can compete in well into your 80s and 90s, it, it, unlike rugby or some other sports, which are all fantastic, this is a sport where you can you know, keep improving and, and, and keep growing almost in perpetuity. Yeah, correct. That, that, ex that is exactly what, um, one of the reasons why I was also attracted to powerlifting, because I thought that then me as a nerd thought that, ah, then the numbers are infinite, if I'm going to take it literally. Because for as long as I keep on improving, for as long as I, as you said, opening up my mind and educate myself about myself, that's also, um, it has also taught me more higher self-awareness. Because then I get to know my weaknesses, not only physically, emotionally, and also mentally, because this is a game wherein you have to put all in when you are on the platform. One mistake on your mental state on that day, on the platform, everything is messed up. Talk us through that. Tell us what your mental state is. Do you have a sequence of thoughts that goes through your head? Do you tune things out? Do you try to distract yourself? What, what do you do? Actually, just um, on the week on the, of competition, I go on silence. She's, she's been pretty uninspiring all week. So, um, I'd like to just reflect. Yeah. Um, I'm a Christian, so I read most of during this week, I've been reading Bible verses and all, so I just reflect. And on that day as well, I start the day with a long meditation. Okay, great. And then just before every lift, if you see me bowing down, sure. that means I'm praying that time. So I'm offering up my lift that day. Because it has also taught me that um, my strength is really not mine. It's coming from God, so. That's really powerful. And so you, you, you do this meditation on the morning of the lift? Yes. Is that, are, are, you, are you blocking out negative thoughts? Yes. Are you trying right. to yeah. 
to reinforce positive thoughts. Yeah. Just talk us through that meditation a little bit. So, I read on a certain Bible verse and I would reflect on that, then have some prayer. Mm -hmm. That's before I go to competition for the weigh-in. And even and during warm-up as well, I also do that. And then in between attempts, I would just be bowing down my head and reflecting on the same Bible verse that I have been reflecting on that morning. And I would just be focusing on that and on how to do the lifts, on meaning the sequence of how to do the lift properly. Okay. Because of course, some t we are all humans. So when you go to the platform, you can either be too excited to lift that weight or panic can come in. Yeah. So you'd actually um, forget the little details in the setup. What's going to be your opener, your opening weight for your, for your squat? For my squat, um, I'm still thinking if it should be 132.5 or 135. So I'm going to um, see on the uh, during warm up. So I'll initially submit 132.5. For my bench press, I'm still thinking regard. Um, it depends because my wrist is having a problem. I'm having a wrist problem here because I slipped like two weeks ago. So I'm deciding of opening safe because as I said, I need all openers in. So I might go raw, which is 60 kilos for my opener because that's a weight that um, I can lift anytime, whether I'm sick or not. And then after my first lift on the bench, I will decide if it's okay, then I'll put on a shirt. If not, then I'm going to go all the way raw for my bench. And then for deadlift, I'm going to open around 150 or 155. That's kilograms. Awesome, Leslie. Well, uh, we're going to be traveling with you this yes. weekend and documenting your journey and your, and your event. We wish you the very best of luck. We have 100% confidence in you. Whatever the numbers say on the weekend, you're a champion in our minds and we, uh, we're all behind you for this weekend. So thank you very much. Questions about what motivates her, what inspires her and what she's looking forward to out of this comp. So Leslie, welcome. Oh. That's it.